So based on popular demand, you guys have been asking me to do more business oriented videos. So I create this space and I'm going to start shooting more real estate related videos, how I made my millions. And today I want to tell you guys an example of uh, how to leverage a property uh, at the right time on the right property and make millions with much a smaller capital. So this property we're going to talk about is called Shops at the Home Depot, a small little retail center in Lake Forest, California. This property was bank owned, 80% vacant. There was only one tenant occupying 20%. I was able to buy it for 2.75 million, substantially below market value because it was distressed and it was bank owned. And I was able to convince a hard money lender to loan me $2.4 million, which is about 85% loan to value, uh, very high leverage. And I was able to defer the payments for two years because I knew it's gonna take me two to three years to lease it up. And uh, this was in March 2013. So we were still dealing with recovery from the Great Recession. So everybody was nervous and uh, I saw that as an opportunity. Uh, the property was fully stabilized, that means fully leased within three years. In uh, May 2016, a little over three years, I was able to refinance and pull out $5 million loan from that property. I owed about $3 million with all the deferred uh, interest that was piling up on the hard money loan. So I ended up owing about 2.9 million to the lender. So they made a handsome profit. They made about 500 grand. And I didn't have to pay any loan payments for two years. And the third year I started paying payments, of course. But the best part of the deal is I went in there with about $500,000 out of my pocket to buy the property. I put another $200,000 in for leasing commissions and tenant improvements. So I'm in it for 700 grand cash and I was able to pull out $2 million on a cash out refinance just three years later. And that means I got all my money back and then some. And now I'm playing with the bank's money, right? Just like casino. So I'm in it for a little over $3 million. That's 2.75 million plus my 200,000 I put in for rehab plus some loan fees. And I was able to sell it for $9.2 million. That net me over $6 million profit on a $700,000 investment. In just four years, I was able to take $700,000 and make it into $6 million. And the beauty, the best part of this transaction was I didn't have to pay any capital gains tax because I did a 1031 exchange and I was able to deploy that cash into another value add and just repeat the same process. Now, let me show you the magic of leveraging when it comes to increasing your cash flow on a property. Let's say you got $500,000 to invest. You got many options, right? One option is to just buy a smaller property, all cash, and don't leverage the property or your purchase. So let's say it's a fourplex and it's throwing off 5% cap rate, which is 5% return, okay? So we'll put here cap, 5%. So $500,000 at 5% cap, it's going to give you 25,000 a year in income and that's after property tax insurance landscaper utilities fixing your laundry machines all of it now that's one option or you can buy a bigger property at the same return five percent cap rate and let's just say 12 units at five percent for two million dollar that means it's going to give you if you buy this cash it'll be throwing off 100,000 a year in net income. So we'll put here net income. Now, if you put 500,000 cash and you borrow 1.5 million loan, and loans are about 3% on multifamily, lenders are very aggressive because they love it, it's a very low, it's, it's the lowest asset class in real estate as a collateral, so they love it. So let's say 3% loan. So you're basically going to pay 45000 a year for your loan payment. 3% of $1.5, $45,000. And what you have here is $45,000 minus $100,000 income. It's going to leave you $55,000 net income after your loan payments. Now you see how leveraging a deal, you can 
substantially increase your rate of return on your cash. So 55,000 divided by your cash of 500,000 invested is over 10%. I think it's 11% and then some. So 11% cash on cash, leveraging a deal versus 5%, which is 5%. You're not leveraging it. So you're making 5%, which is $25,000. 5% of 500,000 is 25,000. So here you can make $25,000 a year on your investment or 55,000 a year. Which one do you like better? Of course, 55,000 a year. The other benefit of leveraging, it's much easier to double your money when you're leveraging. In here, you have to sell the property for double the price to double your investment. In here, all you gotta sell it for more is 25% more. So for 2.5 million, let's just say you're not paying any commissions. If you do, you can bump it up, bump up the price. But if you sell this for 2.5 million, which is not a huge increase, right? You can easily do that. Now you've doubled your money. So much easier to double your money when you leverage deals. It gives you extra cash flow as long as your cost of money is less than the rate of the property cap rate. So make sure it's not reversed. If the property is throwing up 3% return and you're borrowing at 5%, it's the exact reverse effect. You'll be paying the bank for buying that real estate. So that's a major no-no. And now how do you sell this for more? 12 units. All you gotta do, increase the income of each unit. So to do that, you do some minor improvements to the property. Maybe some landscape, exterior paint, change out the exterior light fixtures, or maybe just change the car interior carpet for the tenants, uh, remodel their kitchen, what have you. That's a little bit more costly, but I usually like to do a start with the minor exterior improvements because it's not as costly. But when you do improvements, it's expected for tenant to pay more, right? You're putting money into the property, and especially if their rents are below market. And that's the other thing. I never buy a property that the rents are not below market because I want to be able to go and increase the rents, right? So if you're at the market, it's going to be very tough to ink out any more income out of those units. So let's just say you increase the income by $100 a month, and that's $1,200 per month, $14,400 per year. Now, if you take the same cap rate, 5%, and you take this, divide by the cap rate, that's gonna tell you how much you can, you can pick up on the resale profit. There. So 14,400 divided by 0 0.05. So you just picked up $288,000 more on the resale value by just increasing $100 a month per unit. That's easy. Other ways you can also increase value, which I always do on all my properties, aside from increasing the rent, Another way you can add more net income is by reducing its expenses. So let's say I have a gardener that's charging me 300 bucks a month. I'll go bid it out to two other gardeners and I get it down to 150. So that's 150 bucks a month times 12. That's $1,800 you just saved. And if you do that by a 5% cap, my cap with it again, 1,800 divided by 0 0.05. You just picked up another $36,000 by just rebidding one vendor. And imagine if you got, you know, pest control or if you got a property manager, that's a big expense, you know, and you can self-manage it. Property managers normally charge, you know, uh, four to 5% of net revenue. So on a property like this, 12 units, let's just use round numbers. If it's 1500 a month per unit rent, you collect times 12, that's 18,000 a month times 12. So it's collecting 216,000 a year gross, all right? So property managers typically charge about four to 5%, sometimes 6% because apartments are more management intensive, but let's just use 5%. And that's 10,800 a year. So now if you go and drop that or you self-manage, now you just picked up another 10,800 more income because you're not, you don't have to pay this expense. So if you take that plus the 1800 we saved from the landscaper and that's 12,600 a year at a five cap that's another $252,000 congratulations increase the rents 100 a month drop two expense items and now you can double your money really easily in the same market within a few months so i gave you guys two examples of leveraging a deal 
Lake Forest property, which was shops at the Home Depot, that obviously is for a really seasoned investor like me to go out there and pick up a property with a 14% interest rate, hard money lender, 80% vacant. But this is where I started. I stopped buying multifamily homes, increasing rents, doing minor improvements, and then also reducing the expenses, thereby increasing the net income and flipping it. And I probably did about 200 apartments in my early years from 2000 to 2002. And then I uh, got bored with the apartments. You know, I wanted something more challenging and I love commercial real estate. There's a lot more meat on the bone, just like the Lake Forest property I give you an example of, but I hope you enjoyed this. This is a simple mat. Never buy cash a property, always leverage but make sure it's the right deal, there is enough meat on the bone, and make sure your timing's right. You know, I say 90% is timing. So if you buy in 2007, it'd be very difficult to do this or even this. So um, make sure your timing's right. You're buying a distressed property that's got some value add component to it. Rents are below market, you need some TLC. And uh, it's so simple, it's so simple to make money. You just gotta know what you're doing. So, and that's why I'm here for. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you wanna learn more, follow my mentorship classes. That's uh, the link below. And uh, where I dig into more of these deals and how to find these deals and how to leverage. Leverage is magic if you do it at the right time on the right property and you know what you're doing. I need to figure out my way of building wealth in commercial real estate. Flash forward 28 years later, I'm a landlord. I've been able to amass every car that I dreamed of over $30 million worth of cars, $33 million mansion at Pelican Hill. More importantly, I've been able to give back to my kids the life that I never had and my parents for all their struggles. I retired them many years ago buying my ranch. They're living their dreams and give back to charity. That means a lot to me. I have recently pledged a million dollars to the Autism Center at Chalk Foundation. I'm super proud to be able to give back to many kids and many families. So another one of my passions is mentorship, which is why I'm excited to share with you today. A lot of my success has been through trial and errors. Over the past 28 years, had I had a mentor early on, I would have saved a lot of money and lots of time and avoid a lot of pitfalls. So lucky for you, I'm giving you the opportunity to be mentored by me. I created something I wish I had when I got started. We call it Manny Koshbin's Millionaire 